I Am Angus is brought to you by the iGenity Profile for Angus, helping Angus producers everywhere to accelerate genetic progress and reduce risk in genetic investment. Nobody realizes when, you, when you're not involved, uh, when you see a trophy on the wall, uh, it's nice and shiny, but there's very few people, unless you've been gone through it, which several thousands have, first you gotta win the class, then you gotta win the division, then you gotta win the championship. And that's, that's difficult to do. Uh, the first grand champion uh, ribbon I got, I still have hanging on the wall here, was 1950 at the county fair. And uh, unless you, unless you've gone through that step, you don't, you, you, it's hard to understand it. I was uh, born and raised in the Wakefield, Nebraska area on a farm. It was a small family farm, 160 acres, and uh, dad had milk and short horns. Uh, which we milked by hand. And then he had a few pigs and then he had some steers he fed out. And then we had uh, our crops were corn and oats. And uh, we showed at the county fairs with our uh, calves or when I joined 4-H and that. My uh, passion for getting in the Angus business was when we first got into 4-H, uh, my uncle had uh, horned herefords. And uh, he said, uh, I'll bring the boys over, my brother and I, and I'll give them each a calf for, for their first 4-H project. And we fed it up and brought it to the fair, and we did all right, but the Angus beat us. So the next year, why we decided we'd get another Hereford from him, which we, we bought, and uh, showed that at the county fair the next year and got beat again by an Angus. So I told Dad, you know, we've been beat enough with the Angus. We're gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get Angus. And then uh, in 1952, uh, in the fall, I wanted to start with some purebred, so we went to the Interstate Show and Sale in Sioux City, Iowa. And uh, my brother and I each bought a heifer. And then we got Dad to buy the bull to breed to his milk and shorthorns, and then also we could breed our purebred Angus heifers to him. And then in 53, I was still in high school, and I wanted to, to uh, buy, another, get, buy another animal, get started a little more, add to my small herd, and uh, R.E. and L.E. Laughlin from Crab Orchard, Nebraska, uh, had their, what they called their dispersion at Fremont. And uh, my, and Dad said, "Well, you got enough cattle. You don't, you know, we don't need any more." And I got my uncle to take me to the sale. He picked me up at school, took me down to Fremont, and I bought uh, an animal, a uh, lot ten, a cow with a heifer calf inside, uh, for two hundred seventy-five dollars. And uh, on the way home, I said, "Well, I don't know. My dad don't know I'm even gone, so I don't know what." I can do all well, my uncle said, well, you can put her at our place. It was only a couple miles away and then tell you decide what you're gonna do. And I said, well, I also don't have any money to pay for it. I don't have $275 to pay for it. And so when I got home, I, I discussed it with my ag teacher, Lemoyne Brownlee, and he said, well, I'll loan you the money. And so he, we wrote out on a piece of paper that I owed him $275. Uh, for six months at four percent interest, and I still I kept the note till today. I still have it. And he was a, he was just a wonderful guy, and and so we did that. And then uh, eventually, of course, I had to tell Dad about it, and then bring the uh, animal to our place. Well, in '59, then uh, the heifer calf that was Avenel LX had had a calf. I brought it back to the interstate show and sale as a bull to sell, and he was a reserve grand champion, brought $1,070. So my dad said, well, if they're all worth that, we maybe ought to sell them all. And I said, well, no, I think we need to buy some more. 